guys, it's Kayla and Jim and welcome back to Meteorology Monday. Today we are going to look at the movie 2012. It was recommended to us by a friend of ours, so uh, we took a look at it the other day. Yep, yeah, had a movie night, took us a couple nights to finish it. It was intense. <laughs> I'm still coming down from it. Anxiety <laughs> through the wazoo. <laughs> what is one thing that we noticed throughout this natural disasters movie? What was lacking? <laughs> the lack of weather. The description on Netflix there said that it was a natural disaster film. So we hit the play button and picked this to be our next meteorologist reacts to and we noticed that um, there was no weather. We'll get into it more because that's a topic to talk about that's in its right. own. That's why if you if you watch 2012 and you're like, what are they reacting to? Still stick around, they'll click off the end. So let's take a look at the first scene now. What did okay, with this cruise boat scene, what's the first thing that you said to me when uh, when we saw that the cruise boat was in this movie? Oh, <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> Immediately oh. he was like well, we know that they sink. They're gonna oh, die. Yeah, They're gonna. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the ground is going like this. Oh god. But conveniently, they're far enough ahead that it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just the good old boys. <laughs> Watch out for donuts. The only part of the bridge that's up. Here it is. And then, to, just when you think that's not enough. An entire skyscraper. We're gonna go right through the house, Dorothy. <laughs> With the big red truck. Where'd that scene come from? <laughs> Notice how the runway immediately starts falling apart, but somehow they have enough, they have enough time to get up to what, the 83 knots that they needed to get up to? Yep, and then it just all falls. The graphics in this is, is pretty cool. I have to give them that. Yeah. It is very cool. Here we go. Wow, we're just building the intensity. And remember, this guy's never flown before. That's right. This is the part where he said, we have to get up to 85 knots. Yeah. And, and it showed the gauge and they were at like 80, 82, something like that. And so now you're going through this whole thing and it's just, this is just an abbreviated part of the movie, but you know, there's flying through everything. It's like, how much longer does it take to get up to 85 knots? It's, well, it took them like it took them like six feet of the runway to get up to the 80 knots. But then it took them the rest of the runway and half of Los Angeles to get up to 83. It's three more knots. That reminds me of one of those Crash Team Racing you know, video games. We <laughs> this whole movie is like a video game. And don't go around it. Go in between. So, you take a breath, and then it goes right into the next thing. So, we're going from Los Angeles being completely destroyed to Yellowstone. What's happening there? This is going to be the epic super volcano blow up. Super volcano, which you may not know because, you know, meteorologists. But I did my high school senior paper on super volcanoes. So we're starting off like a nuclear bomb went off, which is close to what would happen. This is uh, giving me Dante's Peak vibes. <laughs> they took a page out of the Dante's Peak playbook on this one because, you know, it's just, it, it, this, this movie is like a, a mashup of, of, of Dante's Peak. <laughs> Twister <laughs> and Day After Tomorrow, you know, just, just every disaster you can think of, it's just... Well, not every not disaster. Every, not weather-related disasters, but, not you know. Disaster. But the, the intensity, it's kind of like they merge them all together. Something's blowing up or, like, exploding every five seconds! There, there's no peace <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> that guy's my favorite. <laughs> So in addition to doing my high school senior paper on super volcanoes, I also did my college senior paper writing thing on um, electrification of volcanic plumes, which is basically how when you have 
big eruptions like this and all those particles are running into each other and stuff, you have lightning in those volcanic clouds. This is like the perfect instance to see, like, like Hollywood wouldn't be being dramatic to put lightning into those volcanic ash clouds, but they didn't, which is A, un-Hollywood, but B, uh, it would have been perfect. It was mm -hmm. the perfect opportunity and they missed it. But I guess, again, the movie is not really focused on weather. It's more yeah. focused on end of the world, the earth, kind yeah. of you know, driving toward that. But yeah. definitely with large eruptions like that, uh, there would tend to be some sort of storm growth yeah. over the core there because the amount of heat that's just being released up into the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. and as you'll see going on to, into the movie and stuff, nothing really happens with the, the fallout from this except for there's ash in Washington, D.C. But, I mean, the temperatures would drop dramatically. It would send you into like almost an ice age with how little sunlight would be coming into the atmosphere. You would they would almost like block out their problem by <laughs> blocking out this. And the whole thing is based off of the sun cooking the earth, right? <laughs> yeah. And they just blew up the biggest volcano and, and you pulled the blind shut on the sun. So <laughs> the world should get back to normal. But instead the temperature keeps rising. You would have a ton of storms and there weren't any storms. It didn't even rain in this movie, did no. it? But it all seemed to start with um, the indication that the earth was heating up at its core because of the solar. We didn't see anything in the movie about um, don't go out to the beach, yeah. uh, you're gonna get fried, you know, the, the ocean waters are not heating up. It seems like it's microwaving the core and working its way outward uh, because Which they talk about tunnels and going down deep into the into the earth and, and their yeah. sensing temperature changes down there. But at the surface of the, the earth, are fine. which is much more, you know, yeah, cool concept, but yeah. I, I think, you know. You're missing the atmosphere portion of it. I mean, if you're gonna have that much incoming solar radiation, you're gonna be messing with the atmosphere that's gonna be, you know, changes in storms, an increase in storms. One of the, the ozone layer would warn about all that. Right. They didn't touch on it at all. One of the other things that we always hear about is um, how satellite transmissions uh, get affected. Um, yeah. You know, and yet we've, we've got uh, agencies that are, you know, here's the latest satellite, or here's the satellite of this, and well, I thought the sun was had you know, this effect, uh, so it, that wasn't part of that either. And, and maybe it's was, something different. Still making cell phone calls. Still making cell phone calls. Life was normal on the surface. Yeah. Everything's happening at the core, and then expanding outward into the crust and out on, yeah. you know, above, above ground. Well, interesting concept. It's Hollywood. <laughs> Moving on. And here we go. It swallows them up. And roll the credits. <laughs> Yay! <Thank you. laughs> Our hero and his family are saved by the pilot that hasn't really flown before. <laughs> Almost. Again, a perfect spot to insert lightning into this pyroclastic flow ash cloud thing that's coming at them. They didn't do it. <laughs> Why do they care that they're taking off? <laughs> If I was in the control tower, which has a 360 degree view, by the way. They can see it! it I would, I'd be getting out of the tower. <laughs> I wouldn't care about any of the planes Worry on the runway. Worry about yourself! <laughs> Goodness! They're the ones who are going to live! Why are they still in the tower? That's another issue! Would have been on. like, wait for me! <laughs> oh, here we go. Now we're flying over Mustafar. My bad. Hawaii. Hawaii. And again, <clears throat> lack of lightning, lack of storms, the volcano is still yeah. erupting there, yeah. and and no lightning, no indication of clouds or, or something that's going on. They seem to yeah. be flying in clear weather all the way across yeah. the globe. But I mean, uh, if, if Yellowstone erupted and all of Hawaii is erupting, basically every... It, Given the appearance that every volcano on the planet is now exploding, and they're flying across the Pacific, which is a ring of fire, there should be a ton of ash and debris and volcanoes exploding everywhere. Because, I mean, you're flying over the most active area in the world for volcanic activity, so inconsistent there. Well, it lacked in weather, it made up for an entertainment. Definitely, definitely. Oh, and that poor cruise ship. Remember what we said at the beginning of the video about the cruise ship? No, it's happening. <laughs> I wonder if the band is still playing. Yeah, and here we are in DC, the ash, ash cloud. But I guess it doesn't matter because the tsunami is on its way. Here we are with the giant flood in uh, the Himalayas. 
Which, let me pause that here for a second. It begs the question. This, and I understand the plates are moving and land masses are going all over the place, but what rolled into DC was 1,500 meters high, right? Something like that. Yeah. 1,500 feet, 1,500 meters. Something, like something along that line. Last I knew, Mount Everest was much higher than that. How do we have water up that high? Where did the water come from? It didn't rain for 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> it didn't rain at all! <laughs> Even the biblical story of Noah had more weather than this movie. <laughs> and yes, we have a lot of water under the surface of the earth, but... Um, but that was being microwaved and turned to steam, was it not? Yeah, so... Um, ah, uh, there's our first bout of weather. Uh, there right we there. Okay, so here's the end of the movie, or toward the very end of the movie. And now we have the sun up, we've got some clouds, or the sea is nice and calm at whatever elevation that is nowadays. Well, but that's another thing. Where is their oxygen coming from? <laughs> I think they said that the, they checked the levels of things well, they before the they levels, let them go but, out. But did the atmosphere just like exponentially go out too? Like, I love the concept of this movie. It's very entertaining. But they're leaving out the atmosphere! <laughs> no well, storms, no clouds, no oxygen! It doesn't matter! These people are mutants! Um, I don't know. I don't know. If water comes from the ground up and just starts flooding everything, does it lift the atmosphere with it too? That's a good question. So therefore, whatever, if you're, if you're starting out here, and you know the water pushes you up does it push your block of air with it you as well and so you're able to breathe no matter what that is does the temperature it's a distinct possibility does the temperature kind of stay constant too because it's yeah. pushing the whole thing up you know that's that's interesting if you guys know anything about that comment below is it possible i don't know i i didn't learn anything about that i haven't researched that at all but definitely would have been interesting for the movie itself to specifically say other than just they checked the levels yeah, when we went to school, they didn't really focus on natural disasters no. and, and the ramifications of, of such. So, you know, if you're looking for something with entertainment value and you just want to lay aside the scientific uh, accuracies and just be entertained for two and a half hours and, and be on the edge of your seat, you know, this is definitely one of those kinds definitely. of movies. Disclaimer, we don't know exactly what we're talking about geology-wise. All of our critiques and stuff are all meant in fun, coming at it from a meteorology standpoint. We were kind of disappointed that there weren't very many weather scenes, but yeah, we're not experts at all in geology or science. I only know a little bit about volcanology, so... But we do have experience watching movies. So that's where we're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> so don't hate us in the comments! <laughs> Please leave constructive <laughs> criticism comments. <laughs> don't blast us. <laughs> we're innocent. So if you liked what you saw, go ahead and leave a comment below, as well as give us a thumbs up. <laughs> it's always like that comment you switched it this time. So if you guys like what you saw, give it a thumbs up and comment below. Also in the comments, go ahead and let us know if there's any other videos you'd like us or videos or movies that you'd like us to see. And if you comment one, make sure it has weather in it. Yes. <laughs> we recommend weather that we can give a little bit more input to. This um, is fun to react but this to. This is definitely but, fun. Yeah. And even if it isn't, you know, we'll check it out and and take a look and see, you know, there might be something that uh, we can react in this way from yeah. an entertainment value. Exactly. Or from a hey, they were missing weather perspective as well. We noticed also while we were looking at our stats that like 84% of you who watch our videos aren't subscribed. So if you could please hit that subscribe button. Helps us out a lot. It helps our videos get out there to hopefully educate and entertain as many people as we possibly can. And while you're at it, check us out on Instagram and Facebook, which will pop up in the middle. Ready? Three, two, one. Until next time, I'm Kayla. I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And happy. Charles. Charles.